Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about the dimension correction tool within uh, Business Central. So uh, basically it was a, a tool that was introduced uh, a while ago now through one of the, uh, the wave updates that we get in, uh, in Business Central. And what we can use this tool for um, is uh, we can use it to update um, dimensions on the general ledger. Um, so do bear in mind, um, you can only use this tool to update your dimensions on the general ledger. It will not update the dimensions on your sub ledgers. Um, so you can modify Business Central, you can get apps um, to modify your sub ledgers in Business Central, but the out of the box tool um, will only modify your general ledger dimensions. Okay, so let's get into it. So what I'm going to do is just start by showing you um, the action, um, the, the page that you can use to change um, those dimensions. So what I'm doing here is I'm just searching for uh, a page here called General Ledger Entries, which is basically a list of all the transactions on my General Ledger. So um, I won't spend too long going through this page, but you see I've got my posting date document type, document reference, and then amount. But importantly for this particular video, uh, we've got my department code and customer group code. Okay, so these are my two global dimensions that we're using in the demonstration environment. And what I can go ahead and do here is just click um, correct dimensions on the relevant entry that I want to update. Okay, so I can highlight a line here and I can go in and I can say correct dimensions. So this is from the general ledger entries page, but equally, if you wanted to, you could come in from the GL registers page and you can find the um, appropriate register here and you can go in and just find the correct option here for correct dimensions okay so you can do it from the GL register um, if you want to reverse um, the dimensions for a whole posting or you can go specifically to the general ledger entries and you can reverse it for a particular entry there as well just depends I guess on what you're looking to reverse Okay, so I'll come back into my general ledger entry screen and what I'm going to go ahead and do is just press correct dimensions. Okay, now this brings up um, the dimension correction page on which I can input um, a few settings. Okay, um, so just in the general tab here, I can put in a description, you know, so if I want to put in um, a particular description for this particular dimension correction, I think it just puts one in for you, so it's dimension correction one, then two, then three, and so on. But if you want to, you can update this description. You know, there might be a reason why you're updating it, or you could have some sort of process in place around um, what you need to do before you can update a dimension. So uh, you might want to make that a little bit more meaningful. Um, so then we have the status field, uh, which tells us, you know, what what sort of um, status is this dimension correction um, in right now you know we've got draft and there's a few other statuses that we'll see um, as we progress through the video there um, you've also got update analysis views so if you use those um, just have a think about maybe marking this as yes um, because if you're updating uh, your dimensions on your gl um, you will probably want to do them on your analysis views as well um, but you might have update on posting selected on those. Um, yeah, so just have a think um, about your analysis views. Um, so just moving on here, we've got a few other um, sort of fields which we can use. They're just audit fields really. So it tells us the last modified at, created at, and modified by and created by. So just, we've got a, an audit log there on what um, has happened and who's done it and, uh, and, and, and when they did it even. Okay, so if I come on down into the dimension correction changes, um, what we can then do is we can see all of the dimensions that we have on the entry that I've selected. So I've got the entry here at the bottom and I can then go in and review the existing dimension value code and I can set the new 
dimension value code okay so if i just change my customer group one first here we can see that the current customer group dimension value is medium i can go ahead and change that into large okay and i can change the other dimensions i can add a new dimension here if i want to as well okay um, and what I want to do is I just want to show you here if I go ahead and try to change this um, area dimension C it's giving me an error and it basically says dimension area cannot be used because it is blocked for the correction now what does that mean well as an administrator what I've done on this particular system is if I go into dimension correction settings what we can do here is we can add dimensions that are blocked for correction okay so if for example we had dimensions that we didn't want users to be able to update um, we can add them into this screen so this is just a look up to our dimensions list um, and you can add them into this screen and it basically checks if the dimension is blocked for correction before you go ahead and try to update it and that's why i get that error there it tells me that i can't correct it Okay, so final bit on this particular page is the selected ledger entries. And as I mentioned before, if you can see in the background there, I came in from the general ledger entries page and I've got the single payment record there, 103205, in my selection. That's why I see selected ledger entries, okay? So what you can do is you can add by filter, select manually, or you can add related entries here as well, right? So what this does, is it will go in and it will grab all of my other ledger entries and just bear in mind if you're doing this you probably want to add those in first because it tells us that um, the changes to dimensions were reset because we've added more ledger entries okay um, so now you can see i've got three ledger entries in here and again what i'm going to go ahead and do is change my customer group to large but then bear in mind, I won't do it again because it will reset, guys, but I can remove entries here as well if I want to. Okay, so once we're done um, with all of our dimension correction settings, we can go ahead and we can say run and we can just go ahead and say okay. And what that's done is it's scheduled in the background Full disclosure, I didn't mean to do that. It's scheduled in the background that dimension uh, correction to run. But let me just go in and do that again. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Let me say large. And I won't add the other dimensions in. It's just a, a demonstration. But we're just going from medium to large on the customer group code. Let me say run. And sorry, I'm just going to delete the other one. Let me say dimension corrections and it's just in process so i'm going to delete it and what i'll do is go back to dimension correction 2 i'll say run and this time i didn't do it last time but what i'm going to do is say run immediately otherwise you see what happens is it gets scheduled okay so let me go ahead and say okay and it still tells me it's successfully scheduled but the difference is it's scheduled to run immediately okay so now what i'm going to do is just hit f5 on my keyboard and you see the customer group code there changes to large okay so what i can do now is i can just review my dimension corrections so if i go into my dimension corrections page here what i can see is entry number two we deleted number one um, and the status here is completed right so I can come in and I can basically see what was changed and what ledger entries were involved in that change so this is basically the same page that we saw before um, but we're just seeing the changes that were made and I guess it's uneditable right now uh, but I can go in and undo that dimension change if we want to and I can also update my analysis view from here as well if I wanted to Okay, so this is basically the dimension correction screen and it's basically an audit log um, of what has been changed. But as you saw earlier, you do get your in process and draft changes to dimensions listed on this page as well. So just bear that in mind. 
Okay, so if you want to start setting this up, I'd probably play with it in a um, sandbox environment first. Just make sure that you are comfortable with uh, what it does. Uh, as I mentioned earlier at the top of the video, it changes the dimensions on general ledger entries, but on not on sub ledger entries. Okay, so this payment obviously will have entries for my bank account and maybe other ledgers as well. Um, it won't change the dimension on those sub ledgers. It will only change those dimensions on my general ledger. Okay, so um, some of the considerations, if I go into a page called permission sets, if you wanted to limit these um, actions by permission set, there is a permission set that you need to give your users and um, if I can find it here it's D365 dimension correction okay so I won't go into the permissions behind that there but basically that permission set gives you access to use the dimension correction tool that we've just been through um, and one other thing uh, you should consider if you've got a huge amount of entries to correct you probably want to do that on a job queue outside of business hours in fact I think there is a, a limit I don't know exactly what the number is I think it might be around 10,000 but if you try and change the dimension for more than 10,000 entries at one point in time um, it will give you a suggestion to run it on the job queue right so you might then want to start thinking about filtering and uh, only changing dimensions um, for a smaller number of entries at a time but just one to think about but that was everything I wanted to run through so thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you on the next one